as we are moving into a different phase of our life cycle and how that might be showing up in our bodies and perhaps even in our minds and our mindset. So um, Amy, Amy is also a coach. Um, and if you'd like to introduce yourself and just talk about um, how it is that you help uh, your, your clients. Sure, thanks. And it's uh, nice to be here and doing this with you today, Zelda, sure. Dr. Z. Um, so I am a career and executive coach and I work with leaders and professionals when they're at a point in their career where they're ready to make a switch or a change. And oftentimes that can be a situation where it might come about unexpectedly, especially if a person's working in a company and they're sort of getting news that their position won't be available anymore and they're gonna have to change as opposed to maybe somebody who's just really, um, maybe they're tired of the same role they've had or they're, they're ready to get promoted and it just doesn't seem to be happening. And they're really ready to make a switch um, and they want some help. They want, in either case, um, people appreciate and like support um, going through these types of processes. There's a lot of fears and things that may come up. And so what I like to do is help my clients, first of all, um, get really clear about what it is that they wanna do next, put together a roadmap and then put together a plan so that they can execute on the plan and ideally get to their next stage, uh, whether that's a role or a position or a new occupation to get there successfully and in a way that feels good. That, that is great. And yeah. it's funny because I went through my own transition in terms of my career. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting ways you bring that up because I noticed my weight changes with my, with, with my job situation. In my early thirties, I was at a job where I sat, I sat for a very long periods of time during the day. And I really wasn't paying that much attention to what I ate. So I would have a mid, you know, I'd have my breakfast in the morning, then I would have a mid morning snack, then I'd have lunch and I'd have a mid afternoon snack. Sure. And it was just part of the routine. But then towards the end of that job, I noticed I really gained quite a bit of weight. And then I started to develop low back pain. Mm. And I ended up having a herniated disc and I think part of it was just related to the sitting. So I gained probably about 30 pounds. And when I started my new job as a forensic pathologist, I was standing most of the time because I was doing autopsies. Mm -hmm. And so I lost another 10 pounds. And then towards the end of that job <laughs> is when I, I found coaching and I found my mentor coach, I listened to her podcast and I lost 30 pounds. And since leave, well, since leaving that job and working full-time as a life coach, I've maintained my weight loss. So I really feel like now I'm on the road to where I really want to, to be. And what I love about coaching is kind of realizing, I mean, I was doing it all the time, but just actually getting in my head that I'm the one creating and directing my life. Mm -hmm. And so it's been really exciting and empowering. And so as I work with my clients, as far as weight loss goes, it's taking those talents, skills, and abilities that we were obviously demonstrating in our job situation and maybe in other areas of our life and just transferring that into our health and our weight loss. So for me, I found when I was working, not, not even really working with my coach, but just listening to her podcast, I felt supported and I, I shared her belief or I, maybe I, I took some of her belief, you know, <laughs> that I could actually do this. So do you want to talk about some of the things that you're noticing now as you're going through your own transitions and then as far as your, your weight is concerned? Sure. Maybe 
before I do that, though, I just wanted to comment on, you know, you mentioned um, noticing yourself gaining weight when you were going through a transition. And I think that um, like anything, like any transition, um, there's always stages of change. Yeah. And um, oftentimes uh, the early part of a transition can be very uh, unsettling for people, lots of fears and concerns about the future. Um, I think stress eating and um, not be, sort of having a, a lack of awareness of what we're doing just to trying to get through the day, you know, snacking, maybe even having sugar cravings, that, that all, I, I mean, A, I've experienced that in my own life, but B, I, I've seen this happen to clients. So I just wanted to point that out, that that is sometimes can be part of a transition for anybody who may be listening, who could identify with that. Um, and that that's, um, that might even just be a, a sign uh, really to sort of like some warning lights, like, hey, you know, there may be some things to take a deeper look at and maybe um, a solution it might be to start taking care of yourself differently or just, you know, looking differently at um, what you can do to support yourself so that, um, because what's important, especially in transition is eventually you have to kind of, kind of determine your target, the direction you want to head in the role that you want or the company or position that you want and you have to sell yourself to them. So I think that uh, probably what can be very challenging for someone who might be transitioning is if they've gained a lot of weight is that, oh gosh, am I gonna be treated differently? Am I gonna be able to get the interview? And so this is also the other piece that kind of goes hand in hand with that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's why I think if you start noticing some patterns or habits, some some habits that you don't really wanna have, <laughs> such as the mindless eating or any of those things that you mentioned, you know, that's probably a clue, something to pay more attention to and get really curious about like, hmm, what, what may be happening uh, here? Uh, why am I doing that? So I just wanted to, you know, mention that because I think it's very, uh, especially right now in this pandemic, I think because we are living such different lives, it's very easy to just be grazing a lot or trying things out. The holidays are here. Um, I'll just try a little of that or a little of this. Um, it's going to happen. So I want to, first of all, just, I guess, normalize that is this is part sometimes of things that can happen. And in transition, it is important because selling oneself means that we look our best, we feel our best, we come across very positively and confident. And it's hard to do that if you don't feel that from the inside out. So at least right. that's what I have found. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then just a little bit about me. Um, I'm in my early 50s and I have started menopause. And so I'm definitely having some of the typical uh, um, symptoms that someone would have well in menopause, you know, hot flashes, um, having night sweats, maybe having weight gain in the midsection, um, a lot of which has to do, as I've learned, you know, through because of hormonal changes that are happening in my body. So to, I always like to tell myself to no fault of my own, um, but still um, I think that it's been hard from time to time to really embrace my body and love my body in this stage of my life, you know, accept my, these nuances, these changes and recognize that it's just part of my life experience and how do I welcome it and bring more joy and acceptance to my life as opposed to, you know, my inner critic, which gets pretty loud, especially, you know, if I'm having challenges like I was a few days ago with a pair of pants that you know, normally fit really well and it's all over, you know, I'm having a hard time zipping or something. It's, it, I have my days is what yeah. I say. Yeah. yeah. And I just wanted to say, you know, that um, that also is very common, what, what you are describing. Mm -hmm. And part of the menopause and just the aging process in general is that we do lose some of our muscle capacity, our muscle mass. Yep. So, yeah, so that's, that's part of it too. So actually uh, maybe having um, some resistance um, exercises in your um, regimen, whatever your exercise regimen is, becomes more important as we age, obviously. 
And then just maintaining strength and balance, particularly as we go into our latter years. So that's mm -hmm. very important. And then just for the listeners too, it's important to uh, see your doctor to schedule those checkups um, because there are metabolic changes that might take place, thyroid issues that may um, manifest or become more noticeable. So it's important to obviously get a checkup, make sure um, that uh, there's no physical problems yeah. um, that might be masked um, or look like, you know, maybe this is just part of normal aging. But the other thing I was going to say too is um, uh, you mentioned about this body um, consciousness or body love. And um, as we talk about that, we tend to move towards things that we enjoy that make us feel good mm -hmm. and obviously move away from things that are more painful or you know uncomfortable for us and so as we're talking about looking at our bodies and the way that we feel about our bodies it is important to be aware of the negative thoughts or feelings that we have about our bodies because that is going to impact you know the way that we treat our bodies and we treat ourselves and so as much as possible incorporating a sense of acceptance and maybe you know accepting or loving your body might be too much of a stretch but even going to the point of I have a body <laughs> and, you know, and then appreciating yeah. the things that our bodies can do and that they yeah. do for us is yeah. also very important. Yeah. I, I would uh, concur and uh, thank you for the reminder of, you know, as we're aging, some of the different um, needs that our body has because of muscle loss and mm -hmm. other things. We lose muscle mass. And I think I'm learning some of these things and have actually started a regime where I'm doing more strength training. I'm also working on just mobility and flexibility in general. I'm finding that to be helpful. But back to what you were just saying a second ago, um, I've really found that when I, I I've done some um, research you know, where they talk about how uh, many thoughts that we have in a day, which are like thousands of thoughts. Yeah. So if these thoughts have a negative connotation, it's obviously inner critic. Um, you know, we sort of can become what we think about ourselves. Yeah. So I've really been working to have um, positive affirmations. I think, I'm sure you've heard of Louise, Dr. Louise Hay. Oh yeah. All her amazing work in the affirmations world. Yeah. Um, I really um, find um, as a backdrop to my own like self-care and self-support, I like to write out affirmations that I'll create specifically for myself or something specific that I know is um, tugging at me or tugging at my heart. Mm -hmm. And I put them in my bathroom. Oh. Um, right now I have, um, it's more from my meditation practice, but it's like, you know, may I be at ease? May I have joy? and I forget the last one, but they're, they're literally right in the bathroom. So, and they're right on my mirror. So the very first thing that I see in the morning is this affirmation that I can see and repeat it and say it, even maybe say it while I'm in the shower. Um, and I find that to be really supportive and helpful. It's, it's also a way to just sort of, I think, embrace um, where I am right now, you know, enjoy my body and love myself for where I am right now. And also recognize that I'll have days where, okay, you know, I'm fighting <laughs> those little, the little inner critic voice about, look at you, you can't fit this. What happened to that? Oh my God, <laughs> what was that feeling? So um, yeah. absolutely, I would agree with that. And since we are talking about, you know, weight loss and health, um, particularly we do have to maybe change the amount of food that we eat because our our bodies you know with the loss of the muscle and just the other changes our bodies may not need as much energy as when we were in our earlier years and still growing and developing so definitely um, changing our diets we may not need as much food and also the types of food and there mm -hmm. are some some women do notice differences. Maybe the symptoms of menopause may become aggravated 
you know, by caffeine, you know, or sure. coffees, teas, even alcohol. Some yeah. women just leave that alcohol alone. <laughs> well, I, I actually switched to uh, partly, I think it was uh, maybe because of at the time perimenopause, uh -huh. I switched to drinking decaffeinated coffee back in, um, I think it was May of this okay. year during the pandemic. And what I really started noticing is that my, because I am I like one cup of coffee a day. I'm not a big, like I've got to have lots of cups during the day. I know there are yeah. people who are coffee lovers in that way. I always like uh, something in the morning and I noticed right away that within about a week's time, and I didn't have any withdrawal that was very strange. I think that just goes to show you that I wasn't maybe as caffeine addicted as I thought. I didn't have any, you know, bad repercussions as a result of switching from caffeinated to decaf. But I have definitely noticed, um, I wake up a bit, I, I, I find that in the mornings, I start my day, I feel a lot more calm. And um, I do know that caffeine has triggered hot flashes as well as maybe a glass of red wine or something like mm -hmm. that. And so what, the other thing I do and I always have is I drink lots of water yeah. throughout the day. Also, just because I'm coaching, I'm talking with lots of people, I wanna make sure that my vocal cords stay you know, hydrated and I can um, be lifted just in general. Mm -hmm. um, but I find that um, drinking lots of water helps me uh, just also just I think helps me be regular and sure. um, but you're right I, I definitely see certain foods or beverages may trigger some of the symptoms yeah um, and I just think as we're aging you know something because I notice of course my metabolism has absolutely changed although I do walk quite frequently I do early morning walks alone yeah. and with friends um, but still uh, metabolism is different mm -hmm. and certain foods um, you know, I, I think I've shifted some of the things that I'm eating, um, yeah. and I'm, and I'm much more aware of things like intermittent fasting or, you know, trying not to eat anything heavy or large after eight o'clock, yeah. um, trying to have a big meal, maybe middle of day, you know, I, it, there are all these great suggestions and most times I think I'm pretty much following it, but there are definitely times where, you know, that goes out the window <laughs> and that's okay. <laughs> Because that's life. Yeah. Well, and it's interesting because I definitely do the intermittent fasting. Um, I'll have coffee. I still do the caffeinated, but we'll see as I get <laughs> further down. I may switch oh, to sure. yeah. Um, but the intermittent fasting has been a game changer. Like my husband and I, we were on vacation um, not too long ago, and I did allow myself some dessert <laughs> in the evening um, after our, our dinner. Um, but I really didn't gain gain weight. I gained some, but um, but not a lot. And mm -hmm. I think it was because I we we didn't tend to eat breakfast, so that's made a difference for me. And also cutting out as my, I know I, I had dessert, but in general, I do try not to have too much um, sugar. I, I do notice that because definitely with my, with my first job, I was going to the Starbucks, getting the coffee, the sweetened coffee. I think I like like vanilla, uh, the mm -hmm. vanilla latte, <laughs> and then I mm -hmm. would get one of their little pastry or whatever. So I've cut that out. If I do go to Starbucks, I'll get the macchiato, uns done sweetened, just the latte macchiato, not the caramel. <laughs> okay. And it's funny now when I when I have a vanilla latte, I'm like, oh, this is so sweet. So a lot yeah. of people um, have some resistance to giving up the sugar and the flour, but mm -hmm. your body adapts. Your it doesn't even taste the same. Like even if you go for a week without sugar. Then mm -hmm. you, when you finally do, you know, take it in something, oh, it really like kind of jars you how sweet it is. And the same thing with salt. It's interesting. I, there's a, a friend of mine, he lives in New York and he's, um, he's been chronic, chronic, chronically, I'm not sure if that's the right word I want to say. Chronicling? Chron yeah, I don't think. Jur it's journaling? Journaling, but chronic on Facebook, he's been sharing about uh, his own sugar journey. And oh. he's, I think he's going to do a, a month of, you know, not consuming sugar, which sugar oh. appears to be in everything. Yeah, um, I am. I wouldn't say that I'm there at all. But I think that just the awareness of, you know, what am I eating? Does it have lots of sugar? 
yeah. what I am doing is I do try and look at labels and I do look at carbohydrates and mm -hmm. um, sugar and, you know, what, and is it, you know, what kinds of sugar is it yeah. fructose or corn syrup or whatever. Agave, uh, even agave. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think just having, for me, it's like, I don't know that I'll ever a hundred, I shouldn't say it's, it's one of those things where you don't really know it, uh, in, in the immediacy. I think right now having an awareness of what I'm putting in my body and making choices to eat foods that are, you know, organic or they're fresh. Um, you know, I really am working to have more vegetables yeah. and some fruits in my diet, um, more on a more regular basis, more leafy greens, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Because I notice, A, I just, I feel better after I eat it, but yeah. two, I just, I know that I'm at least looking to try to practice better, you know, eating habits. Um, yeah. I think it's, I think with a lot of the stress and challenges that we've experienced this year, on almost every single level, <laughs> um, you know, I, I'm, I'm really working to just have lots of compassion and acceptance for myself and for others um, as well. So sorry if you heard a little, <laughs> somebody drop something over there. <laughs> you can tell this is a, a truly, we're in the moment doing this. Yeah, no, video. that's fine, that's fine. Yeah, yeah definitely more compassion. You know, and I think especially as women, you know, we do tend to take on a lot of responsibility and then feel like everything revolves, you know, like we're the ones holding up the whole entire <laughs> the world on our shoulders, you know, and just learning how to let stuff go and being okay with that, being okay with that and putting ourselves first and that whole self-care, you know. <laughs> sure, I think the other thing that I've noticed that's been challenging is also the, um, the tendency to be comparing ourselves to other people. Oh, I think particularly now, because we are looking at so much online, yeah. it's easy to, you know, click on something and see what someone else is doing. Or yeah. I've even struggled with that at times where I'll be like, oh, I'm not moving fast enough. I'm not getting enough done. I'm a new, you know, just started my business this year in a pandemic. Um, doing lots of learning and know that I want to grow and do more. And I have to remind myself, there's a beautiful expression that I thought I would just share for anyone who might be listening. It's, you know, don't compare your start to somebody's middle. Yeah. And I have found that to be so helpful. Just yeah. right. When I look at someone who's doing something beyond me or, uh, you know, you know, they have all these before and after pictures of people with weight loss and all that. I'm like, Ooh, don't, compare my start with somebody's middle you know we all have our own individual journeys that we're on and yeah. you know really embracing where we are right now is good and, yeah and my husband he's a he's a coach too and he said um he said I wear my heart on my sleeve but I was like oh, I don't know if I like that one so much but he said and I lead with my heart and I said yes and I said when you lead with your heart there is no competition Mm -hmm. And I think that is beautiful because that highlights our own talents, skills, strengths, and abilities, and the people that we can serve and really focusing on that. And I love leading with your heart because leading with your heart means I'm starting with myself. So my heart and my love goes to myself first. I'm putting on my own oxygen mask <laughs> before I, I can help other people. And how can I strengthen and nourish my own mind and body so that I can better serve others? Sure. And yeah, so I, I, I love that. Well, I, yeah, and I also think uh, what I like about that expression is it suggests that we have an open heart. Yeah. You know, uh, we live in... Uh, I mean, there are so many um, stressors and reasons for people to start to shut off their heart or mm -hmm. put up armor and put barriers around it. So if you're leading with your heart, it's, it's an awake and open heart, yeah. which, which usually means, um, at least and I've, when I've done mantras for myself or if I'm like in yoga, is um, this notion of having an open heart puts me in this place of just an open-mindedness, a, a level of 
trusting in things I don't see, you know, trusting, having um, uh, an awareness that I might be vulnerable, but that I'm being fully authentic. And that to me is the way that I want to lead. I want to be in the world and I want to be that way, particularly um, when I'm thinking about my body, the way that I'm um, looking at it as it's, it's my temple. It's what gets me where I need to be. It's, it's what brings me into spaces and places and conversations with people and practicing more with an open heart. I always find when I really feel it is almost everything that needs to happen happens. <laughs> there's yeah. no forcing, there's no pushing, there's no exactly. you know, planning. It just, it just, it, it emerges naturally. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that, you know, increasing your capacity, expanding your space, you know, and then allowing, just being receptive. Because mm -hmm. it's interesting, I'm reading this book now, I don't remember the name of it, but it's about receiving. So many times we think, and we're praised for being givers, but it's harder to receive. But yet, as but it's a two-way street. So as we give, we, we also receive, but we have to be able to receive in order to give. So... Yeah, that's, I love that analogy. And for me too, what's been amazing has been gratitude. You know, like the other day, especially for myself, I get, I get upset sometimes, you know, if things don't go right, or you're trying to figure something out on the computer and you're like, man, I, when am I ever going to, and you start to think I'm never going to, you know, I think I'm never going to learn this. I'm never going to do that. And I found myself doing that. And I've heard that from so many women. I'm never going to lose weight. I can't lose weight. Mm -hmm. you know, and they think I'm never going to figure this out. Yeah. But the other day I was walking and I was thinking, wow, I've, I've been, you know, I feel kind of guilty, you know, because I've been so blessed this year, but um, because I, I did leave my job, you know, <laughs> but it allowed me time and space, which I really needed to mm -hmm. just grow. I've grown so much. I've learned. And every day I go for my walk. And the other day I was like, I almost broke into tears. I was like, I'm so grateful that I am here walking along this bike trail, mm -hmm. you know, and it could have been like a Sunday afternoon and I would be at the office, you know, working. And so just having this time, I have to, rem but I have to remind myself that, wow, I, I am so grateful for the time mm -hmm. that, that I have right now. And so gratitude has really been a game changer for me and just al allowing more compassion for where I am and not arguing with reality. <laughs> I think it's Byron Katie, she says, when you argue with reality, you lose 100% of the time. <laughs> well, yeah, that all, that, those are wonderful um, awarenesses and um, really um, mantras and um, ways to sort of lead and live life in, at a point where, you know, I'll say a couple things I know before we're gonna wrap up. Um, I've been thinking a lot about, you know, how do I want to commend or how do I wanna wrap up the year? Yeah. Because I know right now, a lot of, especially being a new entrepreneur, a lot of the things that I'm seeing out there is, you know, people getting ready for 2021, talking right. about their planning, all of these things, which are very important. But I know that in the past, I used to um, do a uh, eight day retreat that would start typically right after Christmas day, and it would go through the new year. And I found that to be such a wonderful opportunity to take out the time to be in deep thought and reflection, mm -hmm. kind of about my year and also um, thinking about the new year, but where it was being done in a very sort of deliberate, intentional way of really inviting in ease, inviting in lots of space for um, thought mm -hmm. and maybe even laughter, um, even pain, yeah. just really allowing all of the things that touched me to 
kind of come together at a period where I had dedicated it to really honoring the time. So, you know, I think the, the sort of the, the mantra and message I want to practice, because I have found during COVID, I have been a busy person working, 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 you know, trying to build business, be really con in high connections with my clients, making, you know, offering myself fully into conversations. Um, it does take a lot from you. And it, to your earlier point about the mindless things start to happen just because you're just trying to get through your day. So I think for me, this time, um, in addition to gratitude, would be to find the, a way to be very intentional and deliberate about building in reflection, mm -hmm. um, building in practices that help you be present. So whether that's a sitting practice, a meditation practice, a yoga practice, whatever, mm -hmm. but to really intentionally, you know, I'm thinking again, the week, you know, between Christmas and New Year, if you will, as my um, coming back to myself, coming home. And, and that is what will help me gain some new insights, ideas about 2021. Of course, I have some things rolling around in my head now. But to really honor that as this is part of growth, this is part of development. Yeah. 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 No, that's really awesome. Yeah. And as we as we wind down too, yeah, I want to say too that I'm starting um, a challenge, a six week weight loss challenge. Um, I haven't done one. Oh, I, I call it weight release. <laughs> weight release challenge so that's something I haven't done before I'm looking forward to it um but yeah just trying new things I think mm -hmm. 2021 for me will be another year of just trying new things putting myself out there mm -hmm. and just allowing myself to receive what comes <laughs> Yeah, I love, no, I, and I love the trying new things. I'm going to be trying new things as well for myself. Um, my sister and I are actually going to be, uh, she's already started, but I'm going to be trying, I'm going to be not trying. I'm doing, going to be doing. learning um, American Sign Language or ASL, oh. uh, or at least get exposure. I like to say, I want to expose myself to that. I want to do some uh, things that will expose me to learning next year that I'm also looking to um, I'm planning right now to to do uh, my first sort of group coaching program okay. there's two areas that I want to do them in which would be new for me because I've done a lot of individual coaching and not that I've not done groups and held workshops and things but where I'd like to really find the art of creating group experiences because for particularly for learning, they can be very enriching. And yeah. you probably know when you have lots of minds, you know, a certain number, not a huge number, but when you have a little mastermind group together, there's lots of wonderful things that happen. And so I want to create group learning experiences for people who are going through transition also, because it can be just probably like weight loss. I think we have the same both of what we do when we work with people through these transitions, it can be very isolating and very feel very like it's your journey and it's very, it, you know, it can, it can feel like you're so alone. And so what I want to do is try to, I've always said, I want to smash this notion that we can't be in community yeah. as we learn and grow and develop and change. Yeah. 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 No, I agree. Well, that is awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming yeah. in, um, Amy, and for sharing your story and sharing your journey. Thank you for your insights. And um, yeah, I think this is this has been helpful for me, and I'm sure it has been. It will be. Helpful. Oh, this has been great. I and I love. Um, I think it's so relevant to bring in the the individual work we do with ourselves and our bodies, and how then we are out in the world and what we're you know what we're being called to do and how we're being called to help people it's all related so it was really nice to also hear about what you're up to and some of those great reminders <laughs> that you can share based on what you know about the reality of particularly for women yeah and um and how great to hear about your challenge um <laughs> you'll have to make sure to uh, I'll, I'll look for that i'm sure you're going to be marketing that somewhere yeah. So I can share that with my network too. Awesome. Yeah. So for me, it's the ultimate be and then do 
and then we'll have. And then it's a circle because then we have to want what we have. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amy. Um, we yeah. are going to sign off. And All right. Thank you for, for watching. And until next time. Yes, thank you. Thanks, Dr. Z. This was great. Okay, so you're going to.